Next, we have the asset misappropriation, which is the most common type of fraud and often occurs as employee fraud. So, mo na siyang imuhang asset misappropriation because usually, si employee is na manggod niya ang custody sa imuhang um, asset. So, mo na siya. Imuhang, mo na si employee is more likely to commit asset misappropriations. So, examples include, so these are the types of fraudulent schemes no, for asset misappropriation. First, we have the scheming. So, when you say scheming, it involves stealing cash from an organization before it is recorded on the organization's books and records. For example, an employee who accepts payment from a customer but does not record the sale. So, muna siya ang imuhang scheming. Malini, bayad na si customer ang ikaw ang nikuha sa kwarta pero, pero wala kang ingon sa box na nibayad na dahil si customer. So, ana na siya. Wala ni mo recognize nga sale siya. Oh, so, nakuhaan ang inventory sa company pero wala siya yung sale nga nahitabo. So, muna siya ang example sa imuhang scheming. We have another example which is the mailroom fraud. So, sa mailroom fraud, Si employee who is assigned in opening the mail steals the customer check and destroys the remittance advice. So, by destroying the remittance advice, there is no proof na the check or the cash receipt existed. So, makaingon si employee nga, ngayon wala makanibayad, kaya wala mo ko inadawat, diba? Asa man ang ibidin siya, nga nibayad na ka or nag-deliver ka, check dire, diba? Wala. So, muna siya ang mga example sa mailroom fraud. Then, next we have the cash larceny. So, when you say cash larceny, it involves schemes in which cash receipts are stolen from an organization after they have been recorded in the organization's books and records. So, again, lahi siya sa scheming, kasi sa scheming, gikuha ni mong kwarta, wala ka nag-record. Sa cash larceny is, nag-record na ka sa kwarta, na imo pa siya gikuha after na ka nag-record. So, naanay proof na naana na sa company ang money or sa business ang money but then, imo siyang gikuha after recording. Now, an example of cash larceny is what you call the lapping. So, in lapping, what happens is that the cash receipts clerk first steals and cashes a check from customer A. So, to conceal the accounting imbalance caused by the loss of the asset, customer a, customer's A account is not credited. So, meaning, mas kinibayad na si customer A since wala man gikredit yung account so, in the books, is naga po utang si customer A. However, in the next billing period, the employee then receives a check from customer B. Diba na nasa si customer B, nibayad si customer B. Pero instead of recording it sa books ni customer B, ihatong i-record as sa books ni customer A. So, ang bayad ni customer B, gipa as if niya na mo'y bayad ni customer A. So, kana ba? Iyang gitapal-tapal. So, iyan ang, muna iyang buhaton for every customer. Ang bayad ni next customer, kay pang tapal niya sa katong bayad ni prior customer. Kay, ano siya ba? So, muna siya ang muhang lapping. And then, we have the billing schemes or also known as vendor fraud. So, these are perpetrated by employees who causes their employer to issue a payment to a false supplier or vendor by submitting invoices for fictitious goods or services, inflate invoices or invoices for personal purchase. So, examples of billing scheme, we have the shell company fraud. When we say shell company, wala shy company or walay supplier na yung ano nga nag-exist. So, meaning the perpetrator um, establishes a fake supplier on the books of the victim's account and then, maghimo-himo po siya mga fake na mga purchase order, mga receiving report. So, fake documents para arong ing nun yung nag-exist na siya nga company. However, again, in substance, minugna na na siya nga company and then, ingon ang perpetrator or sikatong employee nga nag-commit sa fraud nga, ah, nipalit taong inventory ani nga 
company pero wala good ana ba so kailangan tang mubayad ani nga company da dito ang kwarta is matura sa bulsa ni employee so kay nag create siya og shell company so kana shell company is common na siya ana mag create og mga fake companies ang ubang mga tao or ang katong mga nag perpetrate og fraud to cover up di ba ang ilahang ang um, pagduog fraudulent activities then another type of billing scheme is the pass through fraud pass through fraud is similar to the shell company fraud with the exception that a transaction actually takes place di ba sa shell company is shell, shell raman siya wala si sulod murag ina nagod so wala jud kay murag nahitabo nga um wala jud nahitabo nga transaction pa as if retanan however in pass um pass through the perpetrator creates a false vendor and issues purchase order to it for inventory or supplies the false vendor then purchases the needed inventory from a legitimate vendor and then the false false vendor charges the victim company a much higher than market price for the items but pays only the market price to the legitimate vendor so the difference is the profit that the perpetrator pockets so ang pass through is mura na siya middleman di ba however illegal gapon siya is si company di ba ang ihamang pagtuo is ato siya ni palit sa imuha pero legally is you are not uh, um dili ka wala kay murag authority to operate inana so ang imong gibuhat is na malit ka for example a lower or sub ang imong giingon ang imong gibaligya is class A product However, you are what you are really buying is your inventory is a class C. Then imong iingon dito sa imuhang buyer nga, oh class A man siya mo ni ang presyo pang class A pod ang presyo, di ba? But in reality, it is class C. So imuha is imo lang gideceive ang imuhang um buyer nga mo ni ang hitabo. So si buyer said is mo mo bayad po siya sa imuha pang class A pod nga amount ang iyang ibayad sa imuha, di ba? So kana there that is what you call a pass through fraud and then ang pay and return scheme typically involves a clerk with check writing authority who pays a vendor twice for the same products received the vendor recognizing that its customer made a double payment issues a reimbursement to the victim company which the clerk intercepts and cashes so meaning si clerk Diba na may i-reimburse si vendor kay nagdubli laging bayad but instead of i-return to ni clerk balik sa funds ni company siya na siyang ibulsa so that is pay and return nga scheme now another fraud scheme is what you call check tampering which again self explanatory man siguro no it involves forging or changing in some material way a check that the organization has written to a legitimate payi. So one example is that kawato ni employee ang sa ka check nga pangbayad sa vendor and then yang i-forge ang signature and so on ya siya ang mo in cash. However, karon is mas ni heightened naman ang mga controls sa bank kay if ever na ay mga correction sa imong check is ang ubang banks is dili na, na nila i-acknowledge. So dapat imong imong checks is wala jud siya correction or wala siya mga sayo wala siya mga white ink white ink di ba no also may ano ano white ink for mahandra ano is dili na jud dapat wala nay um wala yung mga errors in your check in your check or ma consider na siya as cancelled so mo nang um medyo lisod na mag check tamper karon unless kung mangawat jud ka og empty nga checkbook na ikaw ang magsuwat kana siya it's another thing now payroll fraud is a distribution of fraudulent paychecks to existent and or non-existent employees. So, payroll fraud is very well known po din siya or common. An example of this is the existence of ghost employees. Diba? So, mag himo kunuhay kag employee din ha nga o kanin siya si employee A kaya nag-exist. Maskin wala yun. Diba? Hatagan kunuhay na ni magsildo si employee A. Pero ang tinuodra is maaturde pa doon sa imong bulsa. So, muna ang example of employee fraud or no na um, payroll fraud rather the next is the expense reimbursement fraud wherein an employee makes a claim for reimbursement of fictitious or inflated business expenses so for example a company salesperson files false expense report so this expense reimbursement fraud is in my previous company 
um, I was an internal auditor. So, um, all those expense reports is maagi sa amo, uh, kami ang mo double check. And our, our company is a distribution company. So, tig distribute me with TNG, um, Del Monte, Monisi, Nutriasia Products, and that to, um, to mga provinces. So, we have a lot of branches in Bicol, in Leyte, Samar, and that. Now, our, now, our salesperson or mga delivery man na mo is na na sila yung mga allowances, allowed allowances. So, na na yung mga weekly, na na weekly expense report. Now, sa weekly expense report, ang mahitabo is dapat mora ni ilang amount ni i-claim for meals, for lodging, and so on. Now, for lodging is na ay minimum amount. Now, I've experienced na ang employee is nag-create good siya og false receipts. Like, um, nag-ingon siya nga ni lodge siya ani na place. So, na siya i-attach na OR sa iyang report. And then, what really happened is, ang iyang gibuhat tradi ay is nakig-scam, uh, nakig, what do you call that? No, um, iharang gi- Uh, laki konsabo ra siya atong sa tag iya sa resibo and then ingnon nga instead of ang budget for instance ibuta na to the the allowance is only 100 per night ang iyang gibutang is balik 500 daw ang lodging ni atong nga place so kami on our end upon checking is kani siya red flag nya siya because kabaugod sila na allowance is only 100 ina na so ngano na butog 500 and then it didn't ang mong first gibuhat is tawagan ang katong place. So, is it really true that your lodging is this and that? Now, niingon nga, oh, ingon, anak, dyan ang lodging, anhi, ana. Now, what happened is another employee went to that same lodging house. Now, that employee didn't know that for instance, that is employee B. So, employee B didn't know that employee A um, had a personal or had a hidden agreement with the um, lodging owner na ingon ani ang i-charge niya na si lodging owner is wala pa siya kay baw na si employee A and employee B are in the same company so when employee B was asking for the receipt of the lodging house ang i-claim niya na amount is or ang i-write na amount is katarad yung eksakto like for instance 100 100 the jud ana so When we check, tibong may nga hala, same rama ni sila o lodging place. Or, kanan na week, diba? So, same rama sa lodging place. Nga si employee A, 500 man hang na sa resibo. Si employee B, 100 ra. Yeah, same rama nga, one night ra sila natulog dito. So, dito na to nga, nag-start nag-investigation na na may mga, uh, mga auditors nga gisend sa field or mga field auditors nga sila dito nga ito sa lodging and then dito na find out nga na na de collusion between katong si employee o tag iya sa kanang lodging nga ingon ani ang ibutang ingon ana so employee A was sanctioned so na kuan siya na o basta na ay mga due process nga gigibuhat so kana siya is it was an example of expense reimbursement of fraud which was very common in my previous workplace so Our task as the auditor is again para ma-avoid na siyang inunana nga mga or not av- not necessarily avoid para ma-detect na siya ang mga inunana nga fraud so or mga fraudulent schemes mo ta mo na or mo na mo ang that was my experience in my previous company now another is the theft of cash which are schemes of course pangawat of cash so kana siya may tabo ni siya kana sa mga cashiers ana or mga collection officers diba we also have, we also have these kinds of frauds or we also encountered these kinds of fraud nga wala na ni balik ang collecting officer or nawala ra siya galit or ang um, i remit niya ang collection is kulang then yung excuse is si seller is wala pa ni baya or si customer rather is wala pa ni bayad so next week na daw however ikaw next week is kulang gihapon so yun na siya and then non cash fraud is dili siya cash ang imuhang kwaon so for example you are selling data de ba or kana mga information about the company or kana mga confidential na mga information nga amuhang ilik sa public baron or to a third party or a competing company so that is also considered as asset misappropriation or a fraudulent scheme